It's down here at Victoria Road, home to Dagenham and Redbridge FC for a brand new Around the Ground. As usual, I'll be exploring the stadium, watching the team take on Scunthorpe United in the National League, plus interviewing manager Darryl McMahon after the game. First up though, let's take a look back at this club's incredibly complex history and wish me luck as this is going to be complicated. Ilford FC were formed in 1881 and played their football at the Ilford Sports Ground until moving here to Lynn Road in 1904, which was the ground that also hosted the 1948 Summer Olympics won by Sweden. Meanwhile, nearby Leighton Stone FC formed in 1886 playing their football here at Granley Road. Ilford were planning to move ground from Lynn Road, so I decided to ground share with Leighton Stone here from 1977 until building was finished. However, Ilford found out that they didn't have sufficient funds to afford a new ground, so in 1979, merged with Leighton Stone to create Leighton Stone Ilford FC and continue playing here at Granley Road. Then the council stepped in, wanting to sell the ground off to developers, so Leighton Stone Ilford moved in here at Green Pond Road, home to Walthamstow Avenue. Later on, in 1988, the club then decided it would be best to merge with Walthamstow, sticking under the name Leighton Stone Ilford. Shortly afterwards, they then sold that ground off for development and moved in with Dagenham FC here at Victoria Road. They were planning to stick around for a few years while their new ground was being built. And that new ground was meant to be on the border of Waltham Forest and Redbridge. So they changed their club's name in preparation to Redbridge Forest FC. However, the move to the new site fell through and the now Redbridge Forest FC were still playing here with Dagenham FC. So in 1992, they thought it would be best to merge together to form today's club, Dagenham and Redbridge. Dagenham and Redbridge started out in the conference before dropping down to the Ismian League in 1996. They quickly regained conference status though and seven years later had a stint in the Football League. They spent three seasons in League Two and one season in the middle in League One. However, in 2017, they were relegated a couple of times back down to the National League, which is where they are today. Victoria Road, currently known as the Chigwell Construction Stadium, is Dagenham's home ground, which can fit in 6,078. The site has been used as a football ground since 1917, first occupied by Stirling Athletic. The record attendance here is 5,949 when the team faced Ipswich Town in a 2001 FA Cup third round tie. The ground is also used by the West Ham under-23s and women's team. We then took a look around the club shop, which featured a range of merchandise, including jackets, zip-ups, hoodies, scarves and football shirts. After that we were quite thirsty so I went and got a drink in the Daggers Bar which was nicely decorated with flags for the World Cup, plus had TVs showing Sky Sports. Okay so as always we've got some food, I got myself a quarter pounder cheeseburger with some chips, Dr Pepper of course has to be, uh, and my dad he's got himself a half pounder which is two quarter pounders, how are you finding that? Very filling. Very filling. Looks filling as well. Mm. Let's tuck in. Now, as I mentioned earlier today, Dagenham and Redbridge are taking on Scunthorpe United in what should make for an interesting clash in the National League. Former League Two outfit Scunthorpe have not had the greatest start to life in the National League, uh, sat in 22nd place, losing all of their last three games. On the other hand, Dagenham haven't done so well either, winning just seven out of an 18 possible games so far, but sit 11th are pushing for the playoffs and are in a good run of form at the moment, winning all of their last three. So it should make for a very interesting game. Scunthorpe started the game in front, creating chance after chance, forcing save after save and making the Dagenham defence work very hard. Very 
However, the Daggers ease their way into the game and started creating chances of their own. And just 13 minutes in, Harry Phipps guided Western's cross into the back of the net to put Dagenham in front. Scunthorpe hit back. Butterfield and Apter having their respective strikes blocked. But their hard work paid off, Boyce volleying the ball beautifully into the bottom corner. Later on, Sagaf had a go, but his effort went over the bar. Then, Apta had another great chance, but the goalkeeper saved again. Just before half-time, Dagenham thought they had gotten in front again, but Dewhurst somehow managed to keep the ball out of the net. And that was the end of the first 45, 1-1. The second half started eventfully, Carver and Phipps receiving yellow cards after a fight off the ball. On a raise then made a fantastic challenge. But a foul from his defensive partner Musa led to a dangerous free kick. However, Butterfield's strike was well over the crossbar. Marias then had a good chance to score, but a great save denied him. Shortly afterwards, he was fouled just outside of the box, creating a free kick in a really good position. Thank you. 
Yeah, he was, yeah. And Western's cross was met by Jay Bird, tapping the ball into the back of the net, winning Dagen in the game and giving Weston the second assist of the match. And that was full time, 2-1 to the Daggers. Joining me now is Saginaw manager, Darren McDonnell. game another win eighth place now do you think that the team can keep us this run and uh, go on to get in the playoffs I hope so there's a long way to go we've um we're in really good form at the moment we've had um everyone has had a lot of injuries but I think the, the team now has really come together and playing very well uh, and in that second half the team really started to play well of course um, they, they carried on and eventually won the game what did you say to the boys at half time so make sure that I just thought we could we could do more I thought in the first half we went great I thought we were um probably a little bit below our standards for where we normally are and I felt in that second half we got stronger and stronger and um, in the end I, th I thought we deserved to win the game with the second half performance. I think we created a lot of chances and limited them to very little chances so pleased with the second half and that game's gone now and now it's on to the next one. Uh, and a standout performer today for me was Junior Marais. Of course he's been with you guys now for about a year. How have you found working with him? Oh, I love working with him. I've, I've played with Junior um, many years ago when I played so I've known him really well and for a long time. Um, he's a player that's come here and he's really taken off. I think we've given him a, a home where he can express himself and showcase his talents and he's really grabbed the opportunity with both hands. Um, would you say you're a manager who likes to give new talent opportunities? Yeah, I think if you look at my team, I think we've, we've, we've found a lot of youngsters. The, the Jay Boyd who scored the winning goal today hasn't played for anybody all season. We only signed him yesterday and he comes in here today and gets the winner. We've done it many times, most of Gaff, even Junior really. Junior was quite a lot of the time not playing for Kings Lynn. And he ended up getting relegated and he's come to us and he's, he's made us a better team. So we always try and source talent and give people opportunities. Uh, and you've been with the club now for a couple of years. How much progress would you say has been made since you joined? I think a lot. I think when I came in we were fighting relegation. Um, three years on now, I think um, we're a team looking off the table. I think we play really good football for, for, for the level. And we're, I think we're progressing nicely as a football club. Uh, and finally, of course, you used to play for Ireland at youth levels. I was wondering what your thoughts are on this year's World Cup and also what it would do for the team with, of course, high leagues being cancelled, more fans coming down here. Um, first and foremost, we're not in the World Cup, so that's disappointing for me. So I'm going to have to support anybody who's playing England just to upset my wife and my in-laws. Um, no, I'm looking forward to the World Cup like everyone is. It's a little bit strange, obviously, being mid-season. It's, it's, it's a strange kind of feeling. It doesn't feel like the World Cup starting tomorrow. It, it feels... It will just feel odd, but I'm sure once it starts, everyone will look forward to seeing it and seeing the colours. I think that's the best thing about the World Cup, Brazil, the, the yellow, the orange of Holland and blue and white of Argentina, all them things that everyone loves seeing. Um, in terms of fans, I think it does make a difference for us. I think we're in a position where we've got Spurs fans, West Ham fans, Arsenal fans and that saturated in London and it helps that they're not playing at the moment for us to get more into the, through the door. And I think it helps as well that the players are playing really well. I think people can come and watch a good game of football at this level now. Well, that is the end of yet another Around the Ground, and I really hope you have enjoyed watching. Of course, the full-time result here today was 2-1 to the Daggers. Another great victory for them. Another three points on the board, and now they're in eighth place, pushing on 
for them playoff positions uh, as we come up to the Christmas period. Uh, I did think the game was very end-to-end. -end. It could have gone either way in periods of play. Uh, you know, Dagenham showed that they did deserve them three points. However, Scunthorpe could have scored two or three as well. Some great defending, some great attacking by both teams. Uh, and overall, a very deserved win for Dagenham Redbridge. And I wish them the best of luck for the rest of the season as well, because with this management team and with this playing team, they can go on to do great, great things. Uh, thank you so much to Liam, the media guy, for arranging our time, and to Daryl, the manager, for accepting the interview. Uh, thank you to everyone for watching. If you did enjoy watching, Please make sure to like, subscribe, share and comment and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.